Hi, I'm Kenzie. Welcome back to my podcast. If you are just joining, welcome. Today we will be talking about my 22nd Blue's Clues VHS, Meet Joe. This VHS includes Joe's first day, and Joe gets a clue. First, let's talk about Joe's first day. This episode starts out with Steve telling the viewer they were having show and tell today. The problem was, Steve didn't have anything to show. He wondered if the viewer could help him figure that out. He could show Horace the anteater, or his guitar. As he strummed his guitar, the phone rang. It turned out Steve's brother Joe was on the phone. He was coming over, today, for show and tell. Then he gave the phone to Blue because she wanted to talk to him. Steve wondered what Joe was going to show at show and tell. Of course, Blue knew because Joe told her. The question was, what was Joe going to show at show and tell? That's when Blue wanted to play Blue's Clues, but first Steve had to get rid of the paw print. The paw print showed us that it just learned how to bounce a ball. Pretty good show and tell if you ask me. And then Steve went to get his handy dandy notebook from side table drawer. Her show and tell was the feather, which was very soft, and she keeps it in her drawer. And so the game Blue's Clues has begun. Steve and the viewer went to see if Joe was here yet. He wasn't. Then Steve asked the viewer if they know what Joe looks like. He showed them a picture. On the way, he tells them that they look a little bit alike, and they both love green and shapes. Then Steve showed the viewer the picture of Joe. He said he started the picture one day after they went to the park. Then he asked if the viewer could help him finish it. It would be great, because they could, that could be their show and tell, and it could be a welcome present for Joe. So Steve put some trees and some grass in the park, even him looking at a bug. But something was missing. Joe was barefoot. Well, it was a good thing he had some shoe stickers. He picked the sneakers, because they are the best kinds of shoes for playing outside in the park. Joe was going to love getting the picture at show and tell, which reminded Steve that we needed to find some clues. Speaking of clues, the viewer spotted the first clue, which is feet. No, not our feet. Web feet. After the first clue was found, Blue was seen making a book for show and tell. The book was about Blue's turtle turquoise. Then all of a sudden, Blue sneezed and her book fell apart. She didn't know where the page fit in her story. Our job was to help her figure that out. It went in the middle, because the beginning was Blue putting food into the bowl. The middle was turquoise eating. The end was when turquoise finished eating her food. After helping Blue, we go see Slippery Soap. His show and tell was showing us how he brushes his teeth. He made pictures to remind him of what to do. As he came back, he dropped the pictures. We decide to help him put it back where it belongs in the story. It goes in the beginning, because the beginning was when Slippery put toothpaste on his toothbrush. The middle was Slippery brushing his teeth. The end was rinsing. After helping Slippery, we went to see if Joe has arrived yet. He hasn't. Then the viewer spotted the second clue, which is side table drawer's feather. After the second clue was found, it's mail time. In the letter, our friends were having show and tell themselves. They showed a baseball glove and trophy, a necklace, a hermit crab, and a fishing pole. After saying goodbye, Steve and the viewer went to finish their show and tell. They put a slide sticker on the picture, because Joe loves to slide down a slide, and he goes, Woohoo! Then the viewer spotted the third clue, which was a quacking sound. That's when Steve realized we had all three clues and it was time to sit in the thinking chair. It was time to think. We were trying to figure out what Joe was going to show at show and tell. And our clues were feet, a feather, and a quacking sound. Steve thought birds have feathers and has feet that are webbed and it quacks. The viewer guessed correctly that Joe was going to show a duck at show and tell. At that point, Steve realized we just figured out Blue's clues. After the celebratory song, Steve and the viewer went to check if Joe has arrived one more time. He was still not here, but not for long. At first, Steve thought the viewer said they saw a crow, but it wasn't a crow. It was Joe. Steve opened the door, and he and Joe hugged each other. They were glad to see each other. So was Blue. Steve told Joe to meet the viewer, so they met. Then Joe brought in his backpack, which has his show and tell in it. Steve called to everyone that Joe was here. Everyone was excited to see him. Then Shovel and Pail wondered if he and Steve could figure out what they were going to show. Shovel and Pail's show and tell was a kite. Then it was Tickety Talk's turn. Her show and tell was a book called Goldilocks and the Three Bears. Then it was Steve and the viewer's turn. Blue gave Joe the picture. He loved it. The sneakers and the slide were his favorite things. Then it was Joe's turn. It was in his backpack somewhere. After some rummaging around in his backpack, he pulled out his duck named Boris. He made it himself. Boris was pretty enormous. Joe pretended Boris was singing in a chorus. Steve brought out Horace so he could sing too. It was so funny. 
As Steve and Joe were putting Joe's things away, Slippery showed him the toothbrush and Blue showed him the book. Steve was so glad the viewer got to meet his brother Joe and got to have show and tell with them. After a fun day, it was time to say so long, but sing just one more song. Yes, Joe knows the song too. Now let's talk about the episode as a whole. I feel like kids can learn a lot if they want to learn about show and tell. It's fun. I've seen younger kids do that in their schools. Now, this episode was probably the funniest episode I have ever watched. When Joe brought out his duck and pretended to be one, I thought that was hilarious. Introducing Joe and having him come on the show flowed pretty nicely. I can't wait to talk about him again. All in all, it's a fantastic episode. Now let's talk about the episode Joe Gets a Clue. This episode starts out with Steve and Joe trying to find each other. Steve wanted to find Joe because Blue had something to give him. He asked the viewer where he went. He went in the direction the viewer said he went, and then Joe comes out. He couldn't find Steve. The viewer told him that Steve went in the same direction Joe went before. Together they went to find Steve. Then Steve comes back telling us he still couldn't find Joe. The viewer told him Joe was in the house. So Steve went in the house, and Joe comes outside trying to find Steve. The viewer told him Steve was inside. Joe got confused because he was just inside. Steve was confused too. After some looking around, Steve and Joe accidentally bump into each other and they are found. Finally, what a search. Steve thought it was a good thing we found Joe because like I said, Blue had something she wanted to give him. The question was, what does Blue want to give Joe? That's when Blue wanted to play Blue's Clues. At first, Joe was confused what was going on, but he remembered that he always wanted to play. Yes, folks, Joe has never played Blue's Clues. But the viewer was pretty good at Blue's Clues, so they could teach Joe how to play. Steve thought Joe was going to love this. So Steve explained that now we get rid of the paw print. In the past, we bounced it away and we wiped it away. There was even a squeegee. Joe showed us a special trick to get rid of the paw print. He snapped his fingers and like magic, the paw print vanished. Steve thought that was pretty impressive. Then Steve and Joe went to get the handy dandy notebook. And so the game Blue's Clues has begun. As Steve and Joe were looking for Blue's Clues, Joe interrupted the tune because he thought he found one. But the thing was, it wasn't a clue. Steve and the viewer explained that a clue was a blue paw print. What Joe found was not a paw print. It was just a block. So they tried again. The viewer spotted the first clue, which is paper. Joe understood now. It was a paw print, and it was blue. So that means it's a clue. As they were figuring out what blue wants to give to Joe with paper, Joe thought blue wants to give him paper, or a paper airplane, or a paper doll. Those are all things Blue could give Joe to Joe with paper, but they needed to find two more clues. As Joe went one way, and Steve was about to go the other way, it's mail time. Steve tells Mailbox that Joe was doing great in Blue's clues. In the letter, our friends were playing Kirsten's clues. Our first clue was a blanket. Our second clue was a pillow. Our third clue was a teddy bear. The answer was nap time. After saying goodbye, Steve went to see Joe, trying to find Blue. She was hiding. They both trekked under the bed. Then they heard barking. It was Blue. It turned out she just skadooed into a picture with all the shapes. Steve and Joe did too. This was Joe's first skadoo. In the picture, there were so many shapes. You could even step inside them. It was like a playground of shapes. After some fun going through the shapes, Joe wondered where Steve and Blue went. It turned out they were hiding. The viewer decided to help Joe find them. There was a hint. Steve and Blue were hiding behind the shape that's closest to the red circle. It turned out Steve and Blue were hiding behind the yellow diamond, because that was the shape that was closest to the red circle. So Joe tiptoed, tapped the yellow diamond, and Steve and Blue were found. Then Joe was going to hide with Blue, and Steve would try to find them. There was a hint. Joe and Blue were hiding behind the shape that's farthest away from the biggest circle. It turned out Joe and Blue were hiding behind the blue triangle, because that was the shape that was farthest away from the biggest circle. So Steve tiptoed, tapped the blue triangle, and Joe and Blue were found. Joe thought the viewer was so good at this game. Then it was time to look for more Blue's clues. Joe and the viewer spotted the second clue, which is a crayon. As they were figuring out what Blue would want to give to Joe with paper and a crayon, Joe thought a drawing, or a coloring book, or a card. Those are all things that Blue could give to Joe that used paper and a crayon. But the third clue still needed to be found, so they could put all the clues together and figure it out. As Steve skidooed back home and Joe was about to do the same, the viewer spotted the third clue, which is a spiral. The problem was, Joe didn't have a notebook. He called to Steve to come back. He does. Then Steve wondered if Joe could hold his notebook and draw the clue. 
He was delighted too. Joe's drawing of a spiral was spot on. At that point, Steve and Joe realized that we had all three clues and it was time to sit in the thinking chair. Steve let Joe sit in the thinking chair. Joe was delighted too. He couldn't believe he was sitting in the thinking chair. He got out the notebook and it was time to think. We were trying to figure out what Blue wants to give to Joe and our clues were a paper, a crayon, and a spiral. Joe thought we could take the crayon and draw on the paper. Then he thought we could take the spiral to hold the paper together. The viewer guessed correctly that Blue wants to give Joe a notebook. What a coincidence, am I right? Ironic, too. At that point, Joe realized we just figured out Blue's clues. After the celebratory song, it was time to give Joe the notebook of his own. He did such a great job playing Blue's clues, after all. So the notebook was kind of like a special reward for him. Joe's notebook was so cool. It was shaped like the thinking chair. Joe thanked Blue. Now Joe can play Blue's Clues with us whenever he wants. What a great thing. Joe couldn't wait to play again. After a fun day, it was time to say so long, but sing just one more song. Now let's talk about the episode as a whole. I feel like kids can learn a lot if they want to learn how to play Blue's Clues. Well, maybe even teach someone else how to play Blue's Clues. It certainly is a fun game, and having Steve and Joe around is twice as much fun. All in all, it's a fun episode. So yeah, that's Meet Joe. If you would like to play again, just go back to the beginning of this episode. And remember, you can do anything that you want to do. Bye!